Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to the channel. This is my second try uh, recording this video. I had like a... So like I know you guys always make fun of me because the videos are so long and you know watch Dave in two times speed or whatever. Uh, <laughs> but I I was getting even more kind of mumbly and into like another planet or whatever. So <laughs> so I had to I was like you know what I did I'm just gonna scrap this one I'm gonna start over. <laughs> so look I'm I'm saving you some time all right let's try and do this pretty quick I want to go to the gym. Uh, it's getting a little late now. So we were looking at this volume profile earlier, and I will say that right now, bulls are not doing what needs to be done in order for this to be kept from making lower lows right now. Um, and I think that overall, my, you know, my calculation as far as like being overall bearish was the correct stance to be taking. Uh, I did think that in the shorter term, you were going to see a move up to 400 ish dollars on SPY, which would be around 4000 on on SPX, uh, give or take. But right now, you're failing these, uh, these shorter term trend lines. And I mean, losing these trend lines is certainly evidence of lower moves. And I mean, even right now, you're getting tanked out of uh, uh, in post. I mean, you're in post market. You're absolutely tanking. So some news must have just broken or something. Composite man must be at work here. Um, you, so, uh, oh, I think that they had another uh, another report that was coming out today, huh? Has to be. Was it the producer price index? Um, no, I think that was yesterday. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Is there a war or something happening? Let me know. <laughs> That's not funny. I'm not laughing at war. Okay. Uh, I just, I don't know. I don't know what I'm laughing at. All right, dude. Today's not a good day for Dave to be making videos. Um. The struggle is real, but today's an important day, so I have to make a video regardless, or else Kenny's not going to pay me. Um, so, <laughs> so yeah, looking at uh, the local, local retracement here, I mean, bulls are desperately in a spot here where you have to say uh, we are setting in a double bottom, right? It's double bottom or it's extension down. Like that is, th those are your two options right now. And so what I'm saying is you're going to have like, you're probably going to have a relief rally off of this move here back up to this midline. And I mean, if you fail that, I fully expecting SPY to go down to 381. And to be honest with you, Going down to 381 is incredibly bearish and pretty much opens up the gates of hell as far as you going back down and doing this macro support trend. It, it just does. It, that's what makes sense on the chart right now. And again, we were we were looking at volume profile yesterday, the localized volume profile from about 2018. Um, and... You know the the next key liquidity zone down below this three eight uh, three eight two, where you found support, but you really don't have a lot of localized volume there, is all the way down here at thirty three sixty four for SPX. And I don't, I mean, you could come down and find a double bottom at the three eight two, but it's going to be very like it's going to be very difficult to imagine that that's a scenario that plays out when you get down to that point. So you're definitely going to want to see some sort of uh, volume uptick, bulls step in, and, and making a real effort to get price back up. But as of right now, you know, being overall bearish is, is in my opinion, the safer play. You have a big, nasty uh, engulfing candle that's developing here on the weekly chart, and whatever news just broke definitely is not helping that right now. Um, and so if you close the weekly... Let's see what the spy one looks like. Ooh, the chart looks really ugly whenever you uh, you do that. Yeah, I mean, it's a giant engulfing candle right now, okay? So, like, literally, bulls need to make a move tomorrow. Like, seriously, tomorrow. Bulls have to make a move, and they have to make an effort to get price back ab up above this uptrend. So what does that look like? This is not likely, by the way. This is not what I'm what I'm expecting. I'm not expecting this to happen, but this is what has to happen. Overnight, you're gonna have to come down, and test this six one eight, and 
in the process, okay, that's already not enough time there, so let's zoom in a little bit further. You're gonna you're gonna swoop down here and test this six one eight Fibonacci. And overnight you're gonna have to come back up and you're gonna have to reclaim this uptrend by tomorrow. You're gonna retest this midline and you gotta be breaking back above it for Monday. That's the only way that uh, you keep 381 off of the table for SPY. Okay? If that doesn't happen by, if you're not back above this uptrend by market close tomorrow, fully expect that you're going to swing down and hit 381 on SPY. Okay? Uh, that's your 707. That's what SPY has been loving to trade on. Uh, and that's what I'm fully expecting to occur. Okay? So here, I'm very cautious. Okay? I'm very cautious. Uh, if you're, if you're, like in leveraged bull possession positions, I you know I mean you just you, you have to find a better entry. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why you would be you would be sitting in leveraged bull positions um, at this stage. The risk is just far too high. Uh, you're you're through all of your local Fibonacci's, um, so you're basically preying on a double bottom here. And perhaps you could you can. And you you don't have those positions in spy a double bottom position in spy like perhaps at market open tomorrow if you're down here you can enter a leveraged bull position and try and catch this kind of swing back up here but I just think that that's uh, d definitely have a stop loss uh, plan um, but but yeah I mean once you blow through all your Fibonacci's for for a local move up you you, you just can't be in leveraged positions for upside. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, let's see. I mean, were you even trading? Yeah, you're trading on your 885, between your 885 and your 707 here, just that chop zone. Uh, and I was saying this in the last video. That's all, The worst thing about recording a video and then not being able to use it, um, which is why I probably should just edit. Um, <laughs> you guys know that I professionally edited videos before <laughs> before I did this. Uh, <laughs> and I hate editing. Um, is the price was just holding unnaturally high in this range. And that's why you're getting this this move down. This is redistribution, in my opinion. That's that's how I see this range. Um, and initially, at the beginning, I had some hope. When uh, let's look at SPX. It's just entirely too ugly. Uh, there's not enough price data back there. But initially, whenever we uh, after we had this run up and then J Powell crashed the market or whatever, initially I was having some hope. Um, that there was going to be some some sort of rounding out that was occurring here. But then once you broke down and then you were just kept testing that uptrend in that way, I was just like, no, this is disgusting. And I didn't want I didn't want anything to do with it, honestly. I, I, I didn't want to take a side uh, until I saw a confirmation break. And that's what you're getting right now on this uptrend. And so as far as being a bull, I, I really don't, again, I don't want to be in leveraged bull positions uh in the short term or midterm like i yeah i i don't know i just it's just not for me um i would i need to see some confirmation i need to see some effort come in from bulls before i before i would do that and alternatively i don't really want to be in bearish positions necessarily either um until you really get a clean break although i am favoring bears right now uh, until you get a clean break, maybe of this 3884 on uh, on SPX ish level, um, and so if you're trading options on SPY, uh, that would uh, let's see, yeah, so that would be about here, which is your 3884, yeah, so three eight three hundred and eighty eight dollars and forty five cents. I fully and totally believe that if you break down below that level. You're going to retest it, and you're going to fail, and you're going to go down to this 381, 382-ish level that we've been talking about for weeks. Um, that's fully what I'm expecting. There is still, you know, the potential that you're looking here at an A, B, C correction and that this now is becoming a double bottom uh, so that you can start a new uptrend. Um, but before you make that sort of assertion, I mean, volume is not in, in favor of that. Uh, let's take a look at volume. Yeah, I mean, bears are in control here. The bit, the selling pressure is just so much greater. Um, and it's at these higher levels as well. It's not like it's at the bottom of the range here. If you like, this was clearly sell climax, right? Uh, a sell climax, and then what became an accumulation, which became a distribution up here at 430 for spy. Um, 
and that's and you, you the again the volume just emptied out whenever you got up here. Like this is not bullish. You have great sell pressure here. You bounce up. Oh, are we creating another accumulation here? And this is a phase B distribution? No, you get shit all over. This is like a big ugly volume candle favoring bears. Um, I, you know, I'm not trying to turn into like super bear. I'm not trying to say like tomorrow we're gonna crash or anything like that. But I will say that bears have stepped in and made effort where they needed to make effort in order to keep a bearish trend going. They are succeeding right now, okay? So until that changes, I am going to be leaning towards bears in the short term. If, again, you get that break back above this uptrend on all these uh, charts, then you can say, Okay, maybe we do. We are developing here. We've had an ABC, and we're gonna have bullish continuation. This was actually um, a five wave sequence up, an ABC down, and you're gonna start another five wave uh, Elliott wave sequence. You can make the case then that um, you know this again, which it was right. This was accumulation. That this was accumulation, and right now what you're having is a backup phase. Uh, but I just don't think. I just don't think that this volume was enough to say that this was a sign of strength. As a matter of fact, this was a very weak move up. And we were saying that the entire time that it was occurring, right? You were developing this wedge. Um, the volume was not where you needed the volume to be. Well, actually, really, the wedge the wedge really happened up here, didn't it? Um, the volume was not what you needed to be. There was no wind in the sails here. Um, and so... Once you came up to that 707, I was saying, look, you could come come up and, you know, poke at the four, $438 or so, uh, but most likely you were going to you were gonna get dumped on after 433, uh, and that's exactly what happened, right? So, um, and again, volume has stepped in, and this does not look like a sell climax. This does not look like um, the type of moment where bulls are suddenly going to step in. This looks like distribution. This looks like redistribution and that you're going to get pushed back down. Okay. So that's my take on the market. Uh, that's what I think. Uh, very bare, I suppose. <laughs> um, AMC is still holding up relatively good. I, I, dude, I really do like where I, I like this chart right now. Like this looks like if you, if you want to be a bull, this looks like a bullish opportunity to me. Um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, the opposite. <laughs> the opposite of what has occurred on SPY, essentially, is what's occurring down here. Uh, you've had this effort down, and there was no volume whatsoever. <laughs> None. No one, no one was even looking at the stock while this was happening, apparently. Like, there was no one at the party. Uh, you, again, you came down to your 786, you rounded out, I actually had this charted like this, you rounded out and then you broke back above and you're back into your, oh, I'm sorry, I don't know why this uptrend got messed up, trading view, dude. Fix it, fix it, fix it. Um... Yeah, I mean, you broke down. You, this is a clear bear trap. There is no volume. <laughs> this is, the like, this was a buy, 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 buy. You got to buy here. And I was telling you guys the whole time, like, I like the way this chart is rounding out. I like, <laughs> you know, uh, whenever this was happening, I was saying that on all my videos. And lo and behold, this is what's occurring. I do not see, like, I'm seeing people talk about head and shoulders. Like, this is the most weird like, what is this? Is this the first shoulder? And then this is the head? Like, hold on, let me let me draw this. This is the first shoulder, this is the head. So then what is, what, this becomes the next shoulder and you just like slowly sell back down here? Like, I don't, that's not, I, okay. So then let's go to higher time frames, right? So, cause, well, you're, you would say, this is not like, this is just accumulation. This has nothing to do, like, I, I just think that you had accumulation and then distribution down. These are two se totally separate trading ranges. Uh, I don't think that they're even related to each other, really. Um, and, like, normally when you see a head and shoulders, it's more of a sharp moving sort of, like, thing. Like, it's like this. It's, you know, 
or like well this is a bad example because there's no right shoulder but you get the idea like you know what i'm saying um it's not this sort of like like i just where can someone answer for me where the left shoulder like is where the bottom of that is on this chart just say anybody do that for me okay um yeah so anyway again the opposite has essentially happened on amc uh, you had no volume and then suddenly, you know, you had this breakout and then all of a sudden here comes volume, boom, pushing the price up. You have a sign of strength right now. What I believe is happening is you're having a reaccumulation occur. Okay. You, you had the highest volume was at the peak here. You've sold down here and bears are not having a field day, right? Nothing crazy is happening. You have plenty of liquidity that you're coming back and testing here as support, right? I mean, this chart, I mean, this just to me, like, I to me, this chart is just apparently bullish. And that, I again, I could be proven wrong here. And you could try and drive price back up here and see that there's no volume support for bulls and then get pushed back down. Um, but as of right now, like, I, I am favoring the bull case on this chart. Like, you... I, I don't know. I just I just think that you have to it's more likely that you swing up than it is that you swing down in my opinion uh at this moment. And I'm not saying go hyper bull and the price is going to go to like $100,000 or whatever tomorrow. Um I'm just saying that locally, you know, you're in pretty good shape. That's all. Um bunch of squiggly lines on this ape chart. Not really sure what I was talking about. You can go back to one of my old videos and figure that out. Um, ape holding up relatively strongly within the market. This looks like you had a back test and now, uh, you're, you're coming up. You're, I mean, this looks pretty good as well. <laughs> uh, you bulls have checked all the boxes here. They've done everything that they've needed to do to, uh, maintain bullish price structure. Uh, it looks like reaccumulation. It looks like they're just trying to fake people out of their position so that they can reaccumulate and drive price back up. Um, yeah, look, you want to, price target or something i mean i'm not gonna give you a timeline or anything but yeah this looks pretty good to me like you would come up and test like six dollars and fifty cents six dollars and eighty two cents on eight looks pretty uh pretty easy to me um bitcoin range bound nothing exciting happening uh everybody on crypto twitter is probably saying that the world's ending or whatever and They've been super bearish from the beginning or whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, overall, you know, I don't like the height of this range here. And probably what you deserve is a is a press down uh, to lower lows at this point. But, I mean, there's really not a lot of conviction on either side on this chart. Uh, this, is, this is a bad chart, though. The volume is bad here. You do have a lot of selling volume here. Yeah, so perhaps you're actually bear on, uh, on Bitcoin, especially locally. You're testing these lower ranges here. I think I think that you at least come back down um, and test this 19 to 19.3 level. Uh, that's what it looks like to me as of right now. I'm trying to look for a good head and shoulders. Let's look for a good head and shoulders. Um, it's funny because I, I see them all the time. I just don't chart them because I it's just not a it's not a pattern that I use. I I just don't personally like the pattern that much. Uh, I don't know how effective it actually is. Um, but look, here you go. Like this is a head and shoulders, I think. Mm, where would I draw? So this one, basically, head and shoulders always kind of ends up where it where it started off, kind of thing, right? So you would have said like, this is your left shoulder. Uh, I've been right clicking on accident a lot in this video. This is your right shoulder, head left shoulder, whatever, and then you press down, right? Um, and then from there, you're having a liquidity test back at the bottom of the range, right? Below the neckline. Um, so that's basically what a head and shoulders look, looks like. It doesn't normally look like, like I just don't, where is the, I don't really understand. Like if it's, if this is a head and shoulders, okay. Why am I so angry? Also, bear flags. <laughs> if you've been following me on Twitter, I am so tired of seeing bear flags uh, that it's it's unbelievable. Because people draw a bear flag. Like, people would have drawn a bear flag here. that Like, on Twitter, like, this would have been, oh, this is a bear flag. 
Like, but this is accumulation. <laughs> like, this is not a bear flag. This is very obvious accumulation. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't really understand uh, what people are. Uh, I'm tired of crypto Twitter. Maybe I'm just going to delete Twitter. I might do that and just make YouTube videos. Let me know if that's something that you'd be interested in. You're on YouTube, so it probably would be. Um, what am I trying to do again? I'm trying to show you. Yeah, if this was a, this is not a head and shoulders, but if it were, <laughs> it would have been completed already by, so this would have been your left shoulder, head, right shoulder, boom, you've completed, you're, you're back at your neckline, you've already, you've already, you, and you've actually even broken below, so like you've certainly completed uh, whatever head and shoulders there was on this chart. So I, I'm, I keep seeing head and shoulders on Twitter, and I'm trying to figure out, maybe I'm just not that smart. Um, feel free to share with me your best head and shoulders for that. Show me that on Twitter. You can tag me on Twitter, which I just said that I might actually not use anymore. So I might not even see it, and you can't share images on YouTube, which might be an overwhelming benefit of, uh, of that strategy. <laughs> Oh, man. But overall, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Uh, it's my second leg day of the week. So I'm going to need to get some caffeine in me because I'm exhausted after talking about head and shoulders patterns and the world ending <laughs> for almost, well, about 40 minutes now. So uh, stay safe out there. Stay healthy. Eat some good food. You know what I'm saying? Get you like a... Uh, Look, it ain't gonna be like no not fun shit. You know what I'm saying? You can eat healthy and eat some good shit. Like get some fucking like, get a fucking a bur go get some ground beef. Get some ground beef, and roll you up a fucking burger, boy. And look, if you're bulking, dude, eat the shit out of that bread. And if you're trying to lose some weight, man, just eat the burger. That shit is bomb, dude. With some fucking get get like a couple of fries, just portion control it. You know what I'm saying? Keep the calories nice and low. In my case, though, you just get all the calories that you can because you can't gain weight no matter what. Um, <laughs> Hug your family. Hug your loved ones, man. Life is short. Go outside. Fucking kiss a baby or something. You know what I'm saying? All right. <laughs> all right. Later, guys. Peace.